Series 4 de-atomizer. That's what I'm talking about. Noisy cricket. Hey, Kay, no, no, come on, man. You get a, a Series 4 de-atomizer, I, I get a little, little midget cricket. Oh, yeah. Hey, what's crackalacking, people? The Switch is the noisy cricket of the industry. <laughs> so, uh, what do I mean by this analogy? Well, I think many of us are sensing it, feeling it, and would be hard pressed to completely disagree with the fact that not only is the Nintendo Switch selling faster than any console ever in many regions of the world, it's for many people becoming their now go to console, the primary platform for many genres or just their primary platform in general. I mentioned this briefly when I had a when I was a guest on the Active Gamer Life podcast hosted by your one and only Red Knights, along with other two Nintendo YouTube brothers, Terminator Juice and Mr. T. And Mr. T also briefly commented on this, you know, that for me, um, buying games on Steam has pretty much become redundant since I've had my Nintendo Switch, both of which we agreed on. When I actually sat back and thought about it, I couldn't think of any overwhelming reason why I would buy a game from Steam anymore. Or to be more precise, uh, why I would buy indie games or middleware tier games on Steam. Because currently, as of right now, the Switch is still building up its library of AAA titles as it's only been out on the market for a year and a bit. But you know, this is another thing. Uh, like many of us wait for a Steam sale uh, before we seemingly uh, are willing to buy anything on there, uh, which is pretty bad in itself, you know, uh, something I'll consider talking about another day. Uh, for me now, I'm kind of holding on, uh, waiting for what I feel will be, for the most part, the inevitable reveal that whatever game I might be interested uh, in will probably or hopefully come to the uh, Nintendo Switch. And why am I now? waiting for the majority of games that I'm interested in to be released on the Switch? Or perhaps or perhaps more accurately, why do I want these games on this platform more than any other? Well, I, I think that's easy to answer, you know, especially if you're the Switch owner yourself. The console is of now the perfect balance, you know, pretty much the perfect balance between high-end and low-end gaming. You know, that middle-tier, more common PC that people own. That, that, that one device which sits comfortably enough in the zone where many of us are pretty much content. You know, even when it comes to the AAA market, some games might take a graphical or performance hit on the Switch version, but we're for the most part finding ourselves not caring. Now there's another YouTuber um, I'd like to mention here who goes by the name of Vector3, uh, who's uh, only been creating content for a very short time, but you know, I like his opinions, what he's done so far and I can see his channel growing pretty well. You know, I'll naturally put a link in the description of this video so you can find him easily enough. You know, recently, he touched upon the fact that the Switch, or most consoles in general, can pretty much have a version of mostly any game. The, the, the Switch now being uh, more capable than others, I feel. Um, I suggest uh, going to watch his video, as he explains the reasons for this in more detail than uh, going into it in this video. But the comment I left on his channel summed up my thoughts um, on this and it's something that the majority of us who plays games every day already knew in some part uh, but perhaps for uh, many you know many of us never uh, gave it much thought now, for years we've uh, seen technically inferior consoles get versions of games that were initially or uh, simultaneously released on more technically superior consoles which pretty much told us that anything is possible if the developer puts their time and energy into it I first started to notice this way back in the 90s um, on the PlayStation 1, Sega Saturn, Nintendo 64, as well as the growing PC market back then. Now, of all the games to grab my attention, it was Shadow Man that released on the Nintendo 64 back in 1999. When I first saw this on the N64, I thought the game looked great and many times said that the PS1 would probably blow up <laughs> if it tried to do some uh, games that were on the N64. But not long after, the PS1 gets a version of Shadow Man that is technically inferior to the N64 version, but it was made for the PlayStation 1 regardless. This was because the market was there on the PlayStation 1 and the developers made the effort to port the game regardless of whatever compromises they had to make. You know, quickly jump into the Wii as another example and you get a port of Modern Warfare 4 on the system. 
uh, the vast majority of the game modes identical to the PS360 version, uh, with the game only suffering on their technical side. But once again, the game was brought over because the market was there and the developers made the effort and people bought that game. Now, getting back on focus of the topic, it, you know, it was, I feel, for me, with the Nintendo Wii, that an, a new mindset was starting to grow amongst the shadows, <laughs> and was, um, of course, in Nintendo's thought process when creating a Wii anyway. Um, it was lost a bit with the Wii U, uh, unfortunately, in terms of the marketplace, but the Switch has rekindled something that I feel will create a great shift in the console market, one that will change the future of home consoles and one that for the most part has remained exclusive to handhelds and that's the mindset where people are willing to take sacrifices on their games um, are growing content with how great games look in general and also how all this has the benefit of being able to play uh, their games anytime with anyone and anywhere. For decades now the home console market has essentially been dominated by which console is the most powerful and which console offers the best looking games at least from a commercial uh, standpoint this has been the mindset of games moving forward you know how how many more gigaflops of pixels can we pump into a character's face in the, the next uncharted game so that players feel like they're truly um, on an adventure or you know, somewhat can relate to uh, likable characters you know like that's ever been a reason why we um, enjoy such genres all, all that's starting to fade away now, whether you agree with me or not. The, the graphical details that modern AAA studios can achieve or even afford have reached a tipping point, I feel. And it's this point where the shift in mindsets will take place. I foresee the powerful consoles, uh, the manufacturers who like to live on the technical and graphical edge, being relegated to, say, the high-end PC crowd of people, that, that type of mindset, that niche part of the market that appreciates such things but have a very you know having a very little way and impact on the growth of the industry you know because the, the zones they play in are you know too much for most people to, to care about or want to spend their time and money in trying to participate in or even reach what the switch is becoming or has become for millions of people is a platform where it doesn't sit on the graphical edge of the industry but does enough in an era where games look fantastic anyway you know something i've started saying since the gamecube you know with the likes of wind wick and metroid prime um, and even with graphical compromises it's more than enough to make the larger majority of people happy and with its additional features like its portability its optional controller configuration that suits most people's needs and a wealth of other features People start asking themselves, you know, for, for the sake of be better graphics and being stuck to the TV screen or, or, the, or the monitor, um, is it better for me to get this Switch version, this, this hybrid portable version um, that does everything that the other console versions does and more, uh, sometimes, you know, apart from looking as good, but still looking good anyway, because, you know, let's be honest, you know, if, if you took a look, you know, just take a look at Doom on a Switch. Without comparing it to other platforms, um, you know, can anyone honestly say that that game is a bad-looking video game? You know, I, I don't think so. I've, I've recently bought uh, some PlayStation 4 games like Persona 5, Nier Automata, and Rise of the Tomb Raider as examples. And with all of these purchases, I've felt uh, somewhat hesitant. Uh, hesitant in the thought that there could be a chance that these games could come to the Switch. And if they did... I'd, I'd have to double dip and get the Switch versions because I've reached a point in my gaming life where I just don't want to be stuck to the TV. I, I want to have the option to play games at whatever point is possible for me to play those games. You know, I can't do that with Steam. I can't do that with the PlayStation 4. And as much as Microsoft likes to champion this, I can't do that with the Xbox brand. I, I, I felt this with the Wii U, that, that, that liberation as, as a father. Uh, where the kids are hogging the TV or the wife wants to watch something, um, even though the gamepad uh, you know, is essentially locked in the same room, I could continue where I left off at that game point where I, you know, I was playing. Uh, but as we know, the Switch has taken this to the next level. So to wrap this up, you know, I, I asked myself, after playing this console, you know, virtually content with how great the games look on there, virtually content with the controls and all the other features that allow me to play these games anytime. 
any place I'm with anyone, I ask myself, could I go back to a console or PC that's stuck on that one screen? The, sim the simple answer is no. And I think a lot of people will feel this way. You know, a lot more people than those who are still... A lot more people than those who still prefer playing massive graphical blockbusters on the TV only. You know, now, this is not to write off those who still prefer to play that way. You know, not, not at all. What I'm saying is that these people, I, these type of gamers, these, these consumers, I feel will become the niche market. That niche high-end PC crowd and not the larger, more common market who really push the overall sales of platforms. This is why I consider the Switch to be the, the noisy cricket of the industry, because that small hybrid device quickly is and will continue to pack a bigger punch in how we primarily play video games on dedicated platforms going forward, far more than what other consoles offer. And this is just the start, you know, the, the first attempt at a true hybrid console. You know, its graphical nature, like other consoles, will continue to improve. But I feel the way technology is going, these hybrid devices that can be played on a TV, that can be played off the TV, that can be played anywhere, will always remain close enough to the high-end market to be good enough for the mass market to make them their go-to platforms. And what better manufacturer to truly attempt it first than Nintendo? the godfathers of gaming, the one company who shakes up the industry the most and sets most of the templates that others follow. So what are your thoughts people? Do you feel that the Switch, this, this hybrid nature of game consoles is the future? No longer the type of consoles that we've been playing with that are primarily just hooked up to the TV? Or, or do you still feel that these base consoles, these ones that are just hooked up to the TV, will remain that the standard more common consoles you know as always thanks for listening and i very much look forward to your comments below peace